Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys. We are here on location in Grand Rapids, Michigan at JFAX. And I am here with Jake Plack, is it? Uh, it's Jake Pake. Oh, Jake, Jake Pake. Pake. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am very bad at that. That's but uh, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Uh, day one was excellent. Got uh, a lot of uh, friends like Tyson and Sammy, two of the other guest voice actors, are friends of mine. So it was really fun to get to connect with them and then make new friends like Brittany and a bunch of other people that I met here at JFAX from staff to guests and everything in between. So it's been wonderful so far. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, what was it like working in the industry today? Yeah, I mean, that's a really deep question. That's, uh, we could fill hours with that. Um, and one of the panels I do this afternoon is kind of about that. It's called Intro to Voice Acting, where we touch a little bit on like the, the art and the craft and the business. But um, the first things that jump to mind is that like, it is a pretty, um, it's a very competitive industry. You know, and I don't mean that necessarily with the people. I just mean that um, they're, it's, it's a high demand job. Like, oh, yeah. like lots of uh, people want to be in it. So it's like, it's a lot of work scrapping and staying with it. Um, but on the positive side, like, it's one of the most fun, enjoyable things I've ever done. And the people I get to work with are amazing. So it's got that dichotomy of being yeah. a lot of work and a lot of um, putting yourself out there and scrapping. But then, like, the payoff and reward is exceedingly high. And now for one of the tougher questions, it's like picking your favorite child, but what is your favorite character that you have voiced? I so know, I know, that one's impossible. I don't think I've ever answered it. <laughs> um, people, a lot of people do know me as the voice of Professor Sycamore on Pokemon, um, and I, I love that character dearly. Um, he's somebody that like I connected with from uh, from Jump Street, like right away as soon as I like went in and got the character description and audition for him, like I definitely felt like a real connection to him. So he's one that I absolutely love, and I'm like really just pleased his punch, which, what, what, what am I from the 20s, um, <laughs> uh, to get to continue to play him. Like, I'm uh, still, you know, working on the series uh, as Professor Sycamore. Uh, but I also, like, I love playing villains. Like, I think villains, like, often have really dynamic storylines and their characters uh, sometimes get more, um, more grit to them, more, I mean, just think of, like, Batman versus Superman, not the film, but, like, as characters, uh, like, Batman, they, they both have, like, very fleshed out backstories, but based on their character, there there's more of, like, an internal struggle with Batman, whereas usually Superman is portrayed as somebody who's, like, he's, he's, a, he's got more purity to him. Mm -hmm. Batman is obviously not a villain, but you know what I mean? Like, sometimes villains just have a lot more ebb and flow, and there's things that war in yeah. them, and then for the, the writing, on the writing side of villains, they often try and explain that, uh, they try and show that within the series so that you don't just have, like, generic bad guy. Like, you know, so-and-so is just a bad man. Like, that's not that interesting. Aww. So they, they paint in that backstory. And I, I love that about villains. I love finding what makes villains tick, you know, and, like, finding that connection. So, yeah. Yeah, it has a lot more plot and spiciness to the story. <laughs> Agreed, yeah. Yeah, and talking about Professor Sycamore, what is it like performing in Pokemon? I mean, it's, a uh, it's an absolute treat. Like, if it's such um, a storied and long-running amazing franchise, you know, it's just, it, it is like being part of a, a dream team of sorts. Uh, so, like, it's a real honor. And, like, I think the, the cast, crew, uh, creative team, like, everyone's firing on all cylinders. It's the type of place, like, where you feel super confident every time you you go in there, you know the high quality and high caliber uh, to be expected out of everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's the icing on the cake, which is like being part of that family, you know? And the fact that from Sycamore and uh, I played, you know, uh, I'm not actually sure, like, I was, uh, I was cast in w one of the movies, like at the same time I got cast as Sycamore. And I can't remember actually which one came out first, but to go from playing Eric in uh, Red Genesec and The Legend Awakened and then Sycamore and then t starting to add on and starting to do uh, actual Pokemon uh -huh. over the last uh, couple years, like, it's just, I mean, it's, it's a just total blast. <laughs> yeah, because I've always wondered, it's like, how do they really determine what a Pokemon really sounds like, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, <laughs> when there are new Pokemon, that's something to be discovered. And then we have others, you know, that are like from the, you know, the original yeah. that, you know, those were set at the time. And over the years, either like people have come and gone or things have changed, you know what I mean? And so sometimes there are multiple people who uh, may have, you know, at one time voiced uh, a certain character yeah. or something like that. And so those, some of those are set, but then we get to find new ones sometimes, too. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a real fun. Like, Creature Sounds is something that I've gotten to do in Pokemon and, like, Winx Club and some shows like that. And I love that. You know, it's not for everybody because you might not yeah. want to sit in a booth for an hour, like, making crazy bird sounds. <laughs> um, but, like, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and also, uh, what was it like performing in Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, it's... Uh, 
it's uh, similar but different. You know what I mean? Yu-Gi-Oh is another just like um, f- top tier franchise. You know, like being a, being a part of that family is incredible. And Yu-Gi-Oh too, like stylistically, um, the, it, it runs in parallel with Pokemon, but it's still very different. You know, um, there's a lot more. The action sequences are very different. You know, there's a lot more like power ups, call outs, things like that. And I love like dueling and battle stuff. I mean, if you, uh, <laughs> any, you know, if, uh, I work on some shows where. It's one of those shows like where, hey, you play this character, and once an episode, he transforms into a monster and attacks some people, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like I love that stuff. <laughs> um, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, again, that's it's not the case with Yu-Gi-Oh, but I love like the dueling, like I love screaming, I draw, you know, <laughs> um, and that one I was really, uh, it, it was a, it was a blast because Dumon is like my type of villain. He, he reminds me of um, a lot of my favorite villains where. He's somebody that starts out like he's very, um, he's, he's, I, th- I, th- I think he's incredibly intelligent. I'm not objective, obviously. I played him. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, my character is very intelligent. He's the true leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's very calculating, but he has, you know, he's, he is a villain where they bring him in, but you learn more and more about him, and you find out they're like, oh, like, he's just somebody who's pursuing what he thinks is best for his people and, like, is trying to achieve a goal, but he's willing to listen and learn and finds it at the end, like, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but, I mean, he, he listens to um, the good guys, and at the end, there's, um, there's like, a little bit of synergy there, uh, which I think is great. I mean, it's a cool arc, you know? Um, and that's not always the case with characters, you know? Sometimes we just stay in one plane, yeah. uh, but uh, with Dumont, it wasn't like that. Now, the interesting question is, um, out of all the characters that you have voiced in the mm-hmm. past, who would you be, and you can mix and match? <laughs> Ah, uh, man, that's great. Uh, <laughs> there's a character that I'm voicing for a new show. Um, I guess I, you know, I'm not sure how much we can say about it or whatever. But there's a show that I'm in called Super Four that's on Netflix. There's a new season, uh, and I have a role in that. Um, and this character uh, <laughs> is. He's hilarious. I don't. I wouldn't want to be him, but he's hilarious, and he's like one of my most fun characters to play. He's very boisterous and uh, has a good sense of humor. Uh, so he's somebody that I, I really enjoy, and I guess I like, connect with on a funny level. Um, but if you're talking about somebody that I, I don't know, would want to be or kind of hope to be, like I know Professor Sycamore is a fictitious character, mm-hmm. but I do believe uh, in his ideals. You know what I mean? Like he, I think he has values that. Um, I embrace and strive to uh, and tries to have, you know, yeah. like the way he tries to um, support trainers and like puts faith in people and like wants like not only wants to help but also wants people to help people learn for themselves. Like he he has a strong uh, ethic and moral code. Um, like I think he's a person that like brings like eh, this is kind of a weird uh, analogy, but. He's like a sports player who helps like make his team better. You know what I mean? I feel like everything Sycamore is a part of. Like he's trying to like raise the level of everybody. Um, and I mean, if I can do that, even a percentage in something I'm working on, like yeah, I would love to do that. So Sycamore is somebody that I that I would really, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, what was it like working on How We Built the Bomb? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, How We Built the Bomb is a uh, this uh, feature film that I did that was uh, about. Um, the Manhattan Project, um, and I've played Robert Wilson, who was like one of the core members in the development of it, and that was, um, it was, I mean, working on films, every, everything is, every single shoot is, or every show is different, and this one was like very wham-bam, like we had to bang it out very quickly, they were pretty long days, and there was like heavy, like scientific and math information, which like, hey, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, I like stuff like that, you know, like, I, I, I get, um, you know, wired updates all the time. I'm clicking through stuff and, like, reading that, but still not only, like, memorizing and understanding the the text on, <laughs> like, the Manhattan oh, Project and how we were doing <laughs> things was, like, uh, and then to have to do it quickly was, yeah. like, bananas. Um, but I feel I've, I'm really proud of the work we did in the film that we put together, um, and I think everyone really knocked it out of the park, and I still I still remember, like, working with uh, the the directors of production team, and they were, they were very complimentary about how I like, handled the material, and they're like, thanks for, like, being on it with that, and I was like, yeah, like, well, it's important to me, you know, the, uh, the science of this is fascinating, and if you don't do your best, and in my opinion, yeah. like, as an actor, if you don't do your best to try and understand it to the best of your ability and learn it, um, it's harder for you to convey, um, you know, and so that was important to me to, to so try and... kind of, like, put the actual meaning behind the voice, or how to, like, like, the tone, really. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because without, without an understanding of it, um, I mean, it goes for acting, voice acting, anything. Like, if you're just going through the motions, I feel like people can, like, see that that's hollow. If you, like, yeah. if you don't understand what you're saying, you know, if I was talking about fission and I'm just, like, reading something off a page, but I don't know what it means at all, yeah. <laughs> I feel like people can pick up on that. Uh, so I did my best to, to try and lock that down. <laughs> Yeah, and also, what was it like working on the buddy system? Uh, buddy system. Um, buddy system is very uh, close to my heart because that's one of my, like, uh, when I'm not in the booth, I work as a writer and producer for on-camera stuff, like film, television, commercial, documentary, all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, buddy system is one of my creations. Like, I love to write and create original content. Um, so buddy system is a digital series that I made. It's about a... Uh, a music video writer who loses his job because there's nowhere to make music videos for anymore, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's trying to find work, uh, but he doesn't have any skill sets. So his yeah. uh, his dad hires him a uh, <laughs> somebody from a, a company called Buddy System, and they're like work sponsors. They help him find a job and like teach him basic skill sets. Uh, we I worked with uh, the director Kurt Rodigero, who's like one of my creative consultants and my uh, producing partner Trevor Dallier, and. Uh, we, we put together something we're really proud of. We got an awesome cast, and we're proud of the work we put out there. And, like, um, so we, we've got a full, like, ten-episode arc, uh, and we shot the first four of them. And, you know, we wanted to put it out there. People liked it and enjoyed it. And we hope that, uh, you know, there's still a, a chance for a future at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if uh, somebody that puts digital content out there um, on any kind of platform goes, like, ah, you know what? Um, th we like this idea, or we think this was well executed. We hope to get to tell the rest of the story. Yeah. So that's right, viewers. Check it out. <laughs> and also, is there anything that is coming out coming out soon, or that has come out recently that you can plug in for our viewers at this time? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh -huh. um, uh, like along the lines of Buddy System, um, I actually because Buddy System came out like I think our last few episodes came out maybe a little over a year ago, and actually right now. Um, a, a brand new series that I made uh, uh, called Bar Crossed Lovers. It's another comedy. Um, it's, uh, it's narrative. Uh, that's actually running right now. Like our seventh episode just came out on Wednesday. And it's about, you know, two groups of friends, a group of guys and a group of girls that always go to the same bar. And um, there's a character named Justin, a character named Jessica, and they've kind of like had it with the dating game, but their friends keep pushing them out there. And it's just about those, those ups and downs of like, you know, trying to say hi to somebody at the bar and like yeah. it almost never goes well <laughs> uh, so in their lives um for them like people keep coming from their life keep coming into this bar like you know in the first episode the pilot um the uh the, the guy's neighbor comes in you know what i mean he's like like this it's the cute neighbor in the building and so the friend propels him out there and uh that's kind of how the episodes go on. It builds through it, so um, they're episodic, like in that you can just pick one up and watch it, and it'll be fun. But they do build off each other as well. So if you if you start from one and go th all the way through, like you will be rewarded. Oh, um, nice. And so my my uh, production company is called Stagnation Productions. Uh, and if you Google that, like, you'll find our YouTube and our, our Vimeo channels. Bar Cross Lovers is running on Vimeo right now. Okay. Yeah, so you can find that pretty super easily. If you just Google Bar Cross Lovers, you'll also see, like, we're the top video that pops up. It's the one that looks like a comedy and doesn't look like something weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's something we're really proud of. And, again, it's another opportunity. Like, that's a piece of um, IP that I made. Uh, and then I worked with some great uh, other people, like our director, Kristen Sky Hoffman, and... Uh, my my girlfriend and producing partner Jenna D'Angelo, um, like we put that together, and our cast and our DP and everybody did an awesome job, and uh, we're really proud of it. So people can give it a click. They're they're short episodes. They're like three minutes long, so you can just go click oh, click wow. click 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 click. Yeah, I mean, because you're just seeing the little scene where the thing, where the action happens, you know. Yeah. Um, and the people the feedback has been amazing so far. People have been like responding really well, and there's been a lot of social media interaction and stuff. So that's been a blast. And then um, more on the anime and to, like, kind of bring it home to, like, yeah. you know, JFAX. Um, I am, it was announced, so I feel like I can say it, I am in the, uh, the new uh, Gundam uh, series that's coming out. I am, I'm in Gundam Thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a ton of fun uh, working on that with, like, just, oh, my, like, an amazing cast. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to, like, um, s uh, put out some little, like, teaser videos and stuff, mm -hmm. and the stuff looks awesome. So I am... Um, I am positive people are gonna gonna flip over that. Like, oh yeah, it looks definitely. Great. It's like with a series like Gundam. It's yeah, like, it's a classic. You, you just can't go wrong with it. I know it's so um, good. Such is such such a uh, cool opportunity. So fun. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like finally some Gundam action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like who who doesn't love big robots? No kidding, right? Yeah. Like if you don't like mechas, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like it's always.
just fun. And um, as for our viewers tuning in, is there a way for them to get a hold of you through social media, like Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, Twitter is easiest for me. Like, I can be quickest responsive okay. about it. Um, and my handle, my Twitter handle is just uh, my name. It's at Jake Paik, which is J-A-K-E-P-A-Q-U-E, just at Jake Paik. Uh, and I try to be super responsive on there as best I can. If I'm not in a plane or in the middle of a panel, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to respond. And then you can definitely find me on Facebook, too. Um, I, I try to be, uh, I, I'm, I am very active and responsive on there, but there can, you guys know, there's like more to wade through on Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's easier to get inundated. Uh, but, you know, if you find me on there, you know, there's my name again, Jake Paik. Uh, I'm the only one, I'm the only guy named Jake Paik out there. Uh, yeah, so people can hit me up, ask me questions. People ask me about the biz, they ask me about stuff I'm doing, they ask me where to find things, um, and I always do the best to respond. And people also ask me about content creation, like writing and producing. Um, I try to help and answer as best I can. Um, I definitely believe in facilitating anybody that wants to um, go create, build. You know, like I want to do my best to inspire people. People are like, hey, I have an idea about a bug that grows wings, but his other friends don't have wings, and then he blah 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 blah. And I'm like, cool, make it a short story, make it a movie. Like, let's find a way yeah. to have your cool bug with wings story happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm David. And I'm Jake Pake. Yep, thanks for tuning into the Ohio guys. See you next time, everyone.